Hello, in today's video I will be showing you how to make a silicone sock for the heater block of a Mosquito Hot End. The Mosquito Hot End currently does not have a commercially available silicone sock, so if you do want to put one on the heater block to help prevent drafts from affecting temperature and also to prevent plastic buildup on the hot end while you are printing, uh, you will have to make your own. So to build this mold, you will need a printed mold, some RTV gasket silicone, screws to screw everything together, some soapy water, uh, screw, allen key, and you will also need some high grit sandpaper flush cutters and exacto knife or another sharp knife. So the first thing we're going to do is prep the mold itself. So once you take this out of your printer, you are gonna want to clean it up. These two parts are printed in this orientation. These two are face down. So if your printer has a habit of uh, squishing the first layer a bit and you have a little bit of a lip or burr around the outside here, you're gonna want to trim that off. But before you do that, you're gonna wanna screw these two parts together. Now the reason you want to screw these together before cleaning them up is this forms the core of the mold and any mismatch between these two parts will show up in the final product. So what you can do is take a file or an X-Acto knife and just kind of make sure all the flat surfaces where they meet are nice and flat. On these two ends here, these are seal off sides. So what that means is they seal off on the vertical wall in here. This is where your heater and thermistor will come out. So you don't really want to take too much stock off those ends. You just wanna take off that little lip there so it's nice and smooth. Now for the other halves, uh, they're printed in this orientation so you shouldn't have to uh, clean the edge. Although what I do recommend is taking some high grit sandpaper and simply run it quickly so that the tops are nice and smooth because these two clamp together and if there's uh, any bubbles or, or high spots of plastic uh, when you close it it won't make a perfect seal and you'll have a, a knit line all the way around your finished sock. Now for print settings for the mold um, I printed these in eSun ABS Plus. I don't believe ABS is required however my printer is set up for ABS so that's what I printed it with. You are going to want to print this at about a 0.1 layer height or as low as your machine can go. You want as much detail and as smooth of a vertical surface as possible. This will give a better finish on the final sock when you take it out of the mold and will help with extraction. As the smoother it is, the less likely it is to stick. Uh, for settings, uh, standard settings will do two or three walls, 20 or so percent infill. Uh, this isn't really structural, there's not a lot of force on it. So after everything has been cleaned up, you wanna make sure it's all nice and clean. There's no little bits of plastic anywhere. What I do is I take them and this right here is soapy water. This is just water, uh, room temperature with a good squirt of dish soap. So let those soak for a little bit there while I talk about the silicone. So you can find this at a lot of hardware stores, uh, auto shops, online on Amazon. You want RTV silicone gasket maker basically. Uh, there's multiple different brands. You can get it from, this is Permatex. Um, Loctite makes some you need to ensure it is high temp. When you look at them online, uh, this one here is rated up to 316 degrees Celsius, and that's the continuous rating, and up to 343 degrees intermittent. You have to be careful because some of them just list their intermittent temperature. You really wanna make sure that the continuous temperature is within the range of what you will be printed plus a safety margin. So I've gone with the uh, red Permatex, red RTV gasket maker. I have one already made on my machine. I've printed nylon up to 270 degrees. It's held up just fine. So this is the material I used. Okay, so our mold has been soaking for a little bit there in the water. Doesn't need to soak for long, just enough to make sure everything's wet. Now, the reason we use soapy water is twofold. One, the soap acts as a mold release. Once the RTV gasket 
silicone hardens, the soap will allow you to extract the finished mold without it sticking too much to the mold itself. And the water acts as a activator for the silicone. It cures with moisture. So having it in a dry environment with no air, such as this sealed, uh, it will take a long time for this to set. With the water, it speeds up the activation time. So you are gonna want to put it in a wet mold. And that's why we use the soapy water. So putting this together is relatively simple. The first thing we're gonna do is take the core and attach it to the top part of the mold. And it should just click into place. There we go. And then we're going to screw it together. There we go. So that is screwed together into one piece. And we'll just wet it again. Same with the bottom part. Shake the excess off. And now we are going to get the silicone ready. So we're not gonna squirt directly into the mold. What we're going to do, and this is uh, why I recommend wearing gloves when you work with this kind of material. You're gonna wet your fingers and you're gonna squirt the silicone into your fingers. I don't know the exact amount you need. Um, that looks like the right amount. You're gonna want to be squishing some out. Um, the more you put in, the greater your chance of ensuring you fully encapsulate the mold and you're going to want to actually soak it. And this will make a bit of a mess, but you're gonna to wanna to wet it. You're gonna to wanna to knead it into kind of a ball. This is kind of messy. Again, wear gloves when you do this. And I'll just put a little bit more in just to make sure. It's better to throw some out than to waste a day making one and find out, you know, there's a whole part you missed. Okay, that should be enough. So we're gonna take it and put it into the mold. Just kind of push it down a bit. And did I mention this is a little bit messy? Now, put that aside. We're going to take the top half and the bottom half and we're going to put them together. Uh, make sure you put them together the correct way. And we're going to push it down and you're probably going to have some oozing out now. Okay, and at this point we're going to take our longer screws, four of them, and we're going to screw this together. Okay, once you have all four screws almost all the way down, you're gonna to want to alternate corners for the last little bit. This ensures that the pressure is evenly distributed as you do the final squish. And you're gonna to want to see the silicone come out the vent holes on the top. If you do not, odds are you have an air pocket in there, which means you most likely didn't use enough silicone in the mold. Have plenty of napkins or paper towels around. Uh, again, this is pretty messy. Okay. So once the top is screwed on, you're gonna wanna put two screws in the sides and this will pull the two side parts close to the outer wall and ensure that those seal off there because that's where your heater and thermistor are gonna go in. You don't want silicone there. So we're just gonna screw these in on the side. You don't wanna screw anything in too tight and crack the plastic. That will cause an imperfect mold. There we go. Once everything's screwed together, uh, just give it a quick wipe off, remove any excess silicone. And you are going to put this aside for 12 to 24 hours, depending on what the instructions for the particular brand of RTV silicone you bought are. So we'll let that harden 
and we will come back to this tomorrow. Okay, so it's a day later, and this has been curing overnight. So now we are going to remove all the screws and open this up. And with the screws removed, you should be able to pull the top off. And now we are going to use a longer screw, screw it into the core. And we're going to use that to wiggle out the core, and this should take the sock out with it. There we go. Now this isn't a plastic injection mold for industrial use. You are gonna have flash on this, so you will have to clean this up. So the first thing we're gonna do is get the core out of the sock. So pull off this extra flash here. Now, as you can see, this didn't quite seal perfectly on the outer wall here. This really comes down to how your printer set up, how your slicer is configured uh, for dimensions. It's very hard to get this perfect, but it's very thin and will trim very easily. And then also um, these areas right here should be connected and you'll have to cut them. And what I recommend is instead of tearing stuff apart use uh, some flush cutters and cut this way you'll prevent from tearing and possibly damaging the sock you've been waiting this for this to cure overnight you really don't want to destroy it before you even use it and there we go Core is removed, and now we're going to finish trimming this up. So the vents can be cut off, don't need those anymore. And then this is where the heater cartridge and thermistor come out. So there will be some flash here, most likely. So just trim that off. Take your time. Make sure it's all nice and clean. Don't cut anything you don't need to cut. So this is the completed sock. Here. So where the nozzle goes and then for putting it on your hot end it's a little bit easier to do if the hot end is on it already in the tool head but you can install this like this you just want to ensure that it wraps around and grabs onto the top of the heater block wires for the heater that run across the top push them back down and there we go that is the heater sock installed now what I normally do I let it cure in air for another few hours before I actually install it in the printer I'll heat the heater block up to like 100 degrees and let that sit for a little bit as well you just want to ensure everything is properly cured and hardened and then go ahead and print if you printed this right, it should hold on on its own. I have one in a printer right now. I've uh, got about 100 hours on it. It hasn't slipped off in any way. So it does secure itself well to the hot end. 
Uh, you shouldn't have to wrap a wire around it or anything like that to secure it in place. So that is how you make the silicone sock for the Mosquito Hot End. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them below. Links to more information will be in the description as well. Thank you, and have a great day.